Hi, so I'm doing another tutorial today because a lot of people were asking for one. I got a lot of support on the last tutorial I made. I got like 20,000 views. Uh, thank you. And yeah, it's gonna be on one framers. That was like the most requested thing I got asked to do. First, I'm gonna be going over what one framers are. Pretty much um, all one framers are, are they're just like used for adding impact to scenes or like improving on movement in, in scenes just to make your edit look more interesting. And they're also like alternatively known in animation as impact frames. And there's just like a ton of different ones and I kind of just wanted to go over a few of them. I'm going to be going over the most commonly used ones and the ones that I find the most useful. I'm just going to cut to when I have my clips added with like Twixter and Shakes. If you want to learn how to do Twixter and Shakes, I already have tutorials on them. I'll uh, leave them in the description of the video. But yeah, this is what it looks like before adding any one framers or anything like that. Any effects other than Twixter and just Shakes. Okay, so to start out, I'm going to show you how to do the most basic framers, and those would be uh, solids and offsets. I'm going to start out with solids, and then I'm going to go to offsets. And then finally I'll do advanced framers, which are like colors, blending modes, and glitches. But I'll just start out with those first two that I mentioned, which are solids and offsets. So I'm going to start with solids. So solids are going to be like your most impactful framers imaginable. And you can add a new solid by just holding control and pressing Y on your keyboard. Then you can just change the color to white. And then you're just going to click OK. Cut this down to a single frame. And then at the end of a clip, on something like very impactful, you can just add uh, this one framer. So you see what it looks like here. Next, I'm gonna really quickly show you how to do offset framers. Offset framers are pretty simple and um, I'll show you what they do in a second. I'm editing right now and I forgot to explain the use of offset framers. They make your clip look like it's sliding from left to right or up and down. And it's a quick alternative to actually making full on slides. So to make an offset framer, all you need to do is hold control alt and Y to make a new adjustment layer over your clips. And then you're just gonna want to want to cut this down to one or two frames. So I'm just gonna start with it being one and you're gonna wanna have it be at the end of one clip and then you're gonna want it to be at the start of the next clip, at least most of the time. Or you can just have it at the end or just at the start of clip. It kinda just depends on what you think looks better. And then for effects that you're gonna wanna add, you're just gonna wanna use offset and then you're gonna wanna use BCC directional blur. Pretty much what, the, what offset does is it does exactly what it says it does it offsets your clip. So what you can do with PCC directional blur combined with offset is you can make your clip look like it's sliding to the side. So all you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna increase this shift center to value to make it look like it's sliding or you can inversely do this value instead. But if you do this, then you're gonna wanna angle your directional blur to be going up. So this angle here will wanna be zero. That way it looks like it's going up and down. Then you can copy these effects and put it onto your second adjustment layer. And it should look like this. And lastly, I'm going to be going over the most complex framers, uh, which are colors, the use of blending mode, modes, and uh, glitches. So for colors, there's a few pretty good effects that you can use. There are ones like... I'm just going to make like three adjustment layers here, three single frame adjustment layers here. There's effects like uh, tint, and then there's effects, there's an effect like tritone, yeah. So um, here's what tints are, they pretty much just map colors in a scene to be something else. So here it says map black to black, and then it says map white to white. This will just make white colors be white, and this will make darker, or like lighter colors be white. Uh, and dark colors be black. Pretty obvious self-explanatory stuff. But what you can do with this is if you want black to be, say, red, that would change this to be red. And just pretty much anything that's dark to be red, keeping anything that's light to be uh, white. Or like gray, I guess. And then if you wanted the white to be uh, blue, you could have it be like this. 
which again adds some pretty interesting impact. I'm not going to be doing this and instead I'm going to be taking colors directly from the scene just to make this pretty interesting. So the black would be probably like this color, the white would probably be like a light color in the scene but not exactly white so something like that. And this way uh, it works better with the scene. Yeah. Or I could take colors from uh, like the background here with the flooring, map the the colors to that to make it yeah. something like this. And they use another one framer uh, called Tritone that I was talking about previously. It does something very similar, only instead it maps three colors. Um, and it doesn't map black and white, it maps highlights, shadows, and midtones. Highlights would just be whites, lighter colors. Obviously, shadows would be dark colors, and the midtones would be something in between. So, works very similarly to, um, works very similarly to tint. And you can get some pretty cool effects out of this. So if you make the midtones just be black, then you can get something that looks pretty dark like this. Yeah. And this will add a ton of impact to your scene. So if you had like this be a brighter frame, or let's say you wanted to map black to white, this would add a ton of uh, difference in the scene. And then say you want to add this to like a gray color. And then you have this darker color right after it, or darker framer right after it. It looks like uh, yeah. uh, yeah. you could even flip these around if you wanted to. Just kind of mess with it. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. like it a lot. And then you get some, uh, like this, yeah. which I think looks pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look phenomenal, but that's okay. I'm just trying to show you what each of these do. Then there's effects like glitches. There's a ton of these, and pretty much all of them are going to be based around um, plugins. I'm just going to show you a few basic ones really quickly. My absolute favorite one to use would be Omino Diffusion, probably. It just works really well, especially when you work with blending modes, uh, which I was actually supposed to show you first, but I guess I'll show a blend of those with this. So you can kind of mess around with these settings with, Omi with Omino Diffusion. Um, I usually like making it so that there's no like massive tear in it and instead it just kind of has this CRT like effect on it um, and since this is very like in your face especially with it having all these like pixelated differences in it like this um, I'm going to change this to uh, have a blending mode so you can have different bundling modes by clicking on this button. It says toggle switches or modes. You can go over here to modes and then you can change it to whatever you want to use. So I'm going to, I usually like using um, add a lot. I like using overlay. I like using difference. These will just kind of work for a lot of different things. If you want something to be uh, less impactful with something like Amina Diffusion, then you can use like overlay and this gets rid of, uh, or at least makes the white um, blend with the background more and it makes the black also blend with the background more, but it makes it like I don't actually know how this works entirely, but it overlays itself over the uh, background Which looks pretty interesting There's other glitch effects and I guess you could consider it invert as one. So I'm just gonna add an invert here uh, yeah. uh, And then I'm gonna add more glitch effects. There's effects like data glitch, which are pretty obvious uh, glitches. This will, this can compress uh, your effect or compress your background a lot. That's kind of the whole point of it. You can have this absolutely destroy your footage like that, um, which can look pretty interesting, I think. Yeah, and then you can also mix this like in another blending mode or something, like add to add kind of like this interesting glow. And it'll look something like that. And then there's other glitches. There's uh, uni.vhs, really commonly used one. And there's a bunch of different settings for this that you can kind of just mess around with. Um, I would recommend that you uh, scale this up. So under adjust noise scale, under tape damage, you would scale. You should scale this up to be 1.10 if you're using this basic default VHS noise. 
but there's a lot of different settings that you can use. But, uh, so yeah, that one looks good. Very impactful with the impact frame with the framers that are here. So you can use that. You can use bad tracking, which looks like this. There's just a lot of different ones. And if you're using like very bad tracking, then you can change this over to add uh, to make the black kind of disappear. Uh, yeah. I don't know what looks like that. Or you can just leave it and just have this pure frame, which I don't really recommend. I uh, use vertical slip, which I like a lot. Uh, blank tape. Uh, mixed tracking. Color noise. Just any of these really look pretty decent. I really like uh, vertical slip and bad tracking a lot. These are probably my two favorite ones. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Then you have something like this. You can also combine effects on frames. So you could have this over this, or you could have it inversely like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which I think looks pretty cool. God, I'm so tired. Next, I'm going to show you how to kind of like apply all of these effects onto scenes. So now you're just going to do Control at Y to make an adjustment layer. And just cut it and make it into a bunch of individual framers. It doesn't really matter how long it is. It can vary, and that's kind of the great thing with framers. The length, like, it's not always the same. You kind of just have to mess around until it looks good. So I'm gonna make this like, I guess like that long or something. That's fine. And then just cut your framers like this. So that is a total of six framers, three before, three after. I'm actually, I'm gonna make this two before, two after. And what you're going to want to do is the frames that are most different, like these two frames from one another, um, you're going to want to make the first frame that goes to the next scene as like impactful as possible most of the time. So usually this is where you'd want to use like an invert or like a white framer or something like that. And there's a, just, there's just a ton of effects that you can like use here. So um, you kind of just want to mess around with stuff like this. So I'm going to start with an invert here which looks like that immediately. And then you can just play around with these blending modes. I'm gonna go with like, I'm gonna just try a few of them. There's like, uh, there's normal that you can use this overlay. Difference, add, uh, just makes it white. There's all these different effects that you can use here. There's like hue with that, which I kind of like. I think I might keep hue because it makes it not too heavy. And then I'm gonna add a uh, glow. You can use deep glow as one. But I'm actually gonna put it on this layer. That way, I can just have it be normal. Put deep glow in here, and I can move this invert. Uh, then you have like this kind of glowy effect. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna do like an exposure framer, make it darker. I don't recommend that you copy this, but you can absolutely uh, like yeah. can if you want to. But like, just kind of this method of just randomly throwing effects on here is really good. I'm also going to put like, um, maybe like VCC Damage TV on here. I usually don't use this that often. I just don't love how it looks all the time. Um, maybe throw in like overlay on that. And then I can uh, mess around with the seed. I kind of like it like this. It's very much so not that strong. And I like that a lot. There's also effects like, here we go. You need a hollow matrix. Uh, it adds this really interesting effect. And it also lowers the frame rate of your clip sometimes. So it just makes it like this previous frame here, which I don't love here. So I'm just gonna make this frame rate uh, the same as my composition, which is 15 FPS. And then it goes over the clip. And you have like this interesting uh, blue framer here. I'm gonna put some effect on it. Maybe we'll do like add. And then I can add like a tint on here. Just, you know, like play around with it. Just make it look really interesting, really different. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really love how blue this is, but I do like how it looks in of itself. So I'm gonna add a tint here. Maybe I'll add a tritone like I did earlier and just kind of mess around with the colors, take some colors from the scene. Just do whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And if I don't love how that looks too much, I can turn it down and get some blend with the original to get some of that nice blue in there. And just kind of do things like this over and over again until you get something that you really like. Um, I'm just going to duplicate this again to separate them and make sure that the blending modes don't get messed up or anything. 
because I want to add a blending mode on here. Maybe make it like different. Maybe make it like add. Uh, maybe overlay. Just yeah. This is kind of the whole process of adding framers. It's just making the frame that goes to the next scene be impactful and just messing around really. Yeah. I don't really like how that looks to be honest. So I'm just gonna remove the glitch entirely and maybe just add some compression. There's also an effect called motion detect that I think would be kind of cool here. Um, it kind of it takes the previous frame and it like blends it with the next one by detecting motion in the scene. It's actually not detecting any motion, but I'm too lazy to explain how it works. It's not really relevant here. But yeah, you can just have motion detect on here. Maybe make it like add or something, and then it like shows the previous frame. I'm not too sure. What I want to do, but you get the general idea. So yeah, that's that's kind of how you make these framers. I'm just gonna keep adding some more. Oh, I missed this frame actually. I'll add some exposure here, I guess. Maybe like add. Oh, the difference looks kind of interesting. Yeah. Kind of like that, and then on this last one. I can add like some exposure, turn it up a bit, you know? That's what um, these combined look like. I also showed like offset framers, I guess I can show how you use that here. So I just take the effects off of here, make it like normal first, add your offset, go somewhere in the middle, to the side, whatever you want to do. I'm gonna go put it like over here. Add BCC directional blur, and it would look yeah. like this. Yeah. Uh, which looks pretty interesting with it blended with this effect. I actually kind of like it. Didn't expect to like it actually. Um, and then you can like put it over two clips if you want to. Pretty interesting. And yeah, that's that's really what framers are. You just gotta mess around a ton and add stuff until it looks really good. You can combine uh, this with other effects too. And not just have like Twixter and like shakes or whatever. So, um, there's like this one glitchy effect. What's it called? Oh, Colorama. <laughs> that was annoying. And you kind of just get this really crushing uh, color change. And if it's too strong, you can kind of like change. Yeah. Like, I think it is very crushing. Um, so I'm just gonna mess with this a little bit. Change the phase shift to change the colors of it. Maybe do like a full 180 on this uh, here. Have some colors changing. It's actually not that noticeable. I thought it would be way more noticeable. Maybe it's because of this. No, that just doesn't change it that much. Okay. Then you can make it... Uh, I can make it like fade out. So, I'll go from here to 100% like that. And just give it this kind of... Like effect. Yeah, so that's like the end of the tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions. Or anything like that just dm me on one of my socials yeah bye thanks for sticking around i hope you learned something <laughs> if you didn't i'm sorry <laughs>